day in and day. Amen. 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 Praise God for our music ministry. Thank the Lord. Yeah. Sister Lord, allow the Lord to, to keep us up. Mighty, 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 mighty. We ask that, that you open your Bible to 2 Corinthians chapter 5. I'm just going to read one verse, 2 Corinthians chapter 5, verse 17. When you get there, say amen. And let's stand for the reading and hearing of God's word. Therefore, if anyone is in Christ, he is a new creation. The old has gone, the new has come. May the Lord add a blessing to the reading and hearing of his word. You may be seated. Oh, thank you for bringing us here. As we come to this peculiar and precious moment, let every heart be open. Let every ear be attentive. Let every spirit be receptive to what you have to say to us on this first day of this year. But most of all, Lord, I look upon me past my weaknesses, shortcomings, and all my frailties. But wash them away. And for these few moments, make me your instrument. Make me an agent of your word. And allow your word to fall on receptive ears, receptive hearts. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. I want to talk to you on this first Sunday about turn things around. Turn things around. Now, have, you, have you ever had one of those days that you felt that you got up on the wrong side of the bed? Everything you did and everything you touched went the wrong way. Went the wrong way. Was, and and you, you could not do anything to to turn around your wrong day to a, a right day. Uh, in fact, uh, you uh, wish that you had never gotten up out of the bed. Uh, throughout the day, you, you, you wanted to return home and crawl back in the bed and put the covers o o o over your head and, and just say, forget about it. And maybe tomorrow would be a better day. You were simply unable to turn things uh, around. Each, each one of us, we've had uh, days like that. Days uh, that did not get off to a good start, uh, or rather a bad start. A, and that uh, goes through our life, a bad, a bad start uh, to a new year, a bad start to a career, a bad start to a new ministry, a bad start to a new opportunity, a bad start to a path of overcoming a, a illness, of overcoming an addiction or an affliction, of overcoming a broken heart, or simply a bad start to try to, to, to lose weight or get rid of those, whatever it is, uh, sometimes we just uh, get off to a Hey, we have a bad start, and no matter how you try to get off on to get up on the right side of the bed, you find yourself on the wrong side, and you sit back and you wonder, uh, how did I get to get to where I am? How did I, I get here? Well, my brothers uh, and, and sisters, uh, I'm here to, to tell you uh, you can turn things around. You can turn things around. And the reason you can turn things around because Jesus is a turn things around Savior. You, you need to know that, that Jesus is a turn things around Savior. 
let us look at the text and let us look at Paul, the author and writer of our, our, our text. See, uh, uh, Paul had an awesome turnaround in his life. Paul went from being a persecutor of the church to a preacher in the church. Went from being a persecutor of the church to a preacher in the church. And this is what, what happened. See, in Paul in his early 30s to his mid-30s, Paul had it going on. Paul had it going on. He was of the tribe of Ben Benjamin. He, he was a Pharisee of the Pharisees. Paul was well educated. He had the, the diplomas and his degrees and attended the best schools and he had it going on. He was wrapped up into the values of his culture. He, he was doing what he thought he could do to move for upward mobility and, and, and to embrace his values. He, he got tied up and, and, and tangled up. Uh, and being a self-righteous Pharisee, and he was persecuting church. In fact, he he was going out arresting believers. He didn't have any time for those Jews who say that what well, we found Jesus, we found Jesus. Now, my brothers and sisters, we need to stop and take a note of that because many times when when we are at that point in our lives, any many times somewhere. I found from my experience, I cannot, I can only speak for me, but sometime between those uh, uh, early 20s and the mid uh, 40s, or maybe even up to 50, you spend all your time trying to get ahead. You spend all your time trying to put a roof over your head. You spend so much time trying to put food on the table and, and pay mortgages and car notes and, and trying to do all the other things. So sometimes we don't have enough time for Jesus. Uh, we, we don't give in enough, enough thought to, to Jesus. And, and we're so headstrong about what we believe in. Those. And I know when I was in that age group, I, it was not anything I didn't know. I knew, I knew everything. I knew everything. And, and, and that's where Paul, Paul was. But, but he met Jesus on the Damascus Road. He met Jesus on the Damascus Road. And he had a great turnaround. He had a great turnaround because Jesus Christ is the, uh, is the, can turn things around because Jesus Christ is a turn things around Savior. And later in life, after he grew in the law, later in life, after Paul had been transformed from a persecutor of the church to a preacher in the church, now, now y'all can see that, because I know many of you ne ne never thought you, 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 you would be. I heard with Jesus, uh, 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 Deacon LeBlanc, but I heard both Deacon LeBlanc, and I think on New Year's, he may have heard Brother, Brother Larry Williams say, he gave a testimony. You know, Larry don't say too much or nothing, but you know, Larry got a testimony. Ebony, like, passed out, he said, give him the mic. <laughs> he said, give me the mic. <laughs> and one of the things he said, he never thought he would be. Never thought he'd be in the church. Uh, he, he, he gave every that shout out to. He gave every that shout out to. Amen. Amen, brother. But he, but but brothers uh, and, and, and 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 sisters, uh, that's what would happen. But after he matured, after he matured, he wrote to one of his churches. One of the greatest evangelists. He wrote to one of his churches. The words uh, in our text uh, to the Corinthian church and repeat after me. Therefore, if anyone is in Christ, he is a new creation. The old has gone. The new has come. Amen. Paul wrote those words. But, but you know, at this time, you need to know the 411 behind the turnaround. There's always a story behind the story. Uh, I just kind of laid the story out, but there's always a story behind it. So what is the 411 behind? You have a story. You have a story. You have a story. Folks over there have a story. Folks here have folks in the balcony have it. But there's always a story behind the story. Somewhere I read where uh, 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 a famous person who had a whole lot of success. And, and you know, sometimes people say, well, you're an overnight success. 
And that person, you know what that person said? <laughs> it takes about 20 years to become an overnight success. Because what? They didn't see what? The hard work. They didn't see the hard work. They didn't see what was going on. What, what it took to become what? An overnight. So what is the 411 behind Paul's story? Well, let me tell you, let me tell you, tell you this. Uh, before that could, there is a reversal. And when I'm talking about a reversal, you know, a turnaround is a reversal, right? You're going in one direction, then you start going in the other that your direction. So before there is a, a reversal uh, on the outside, there must be really regeneration on the inside. Oh, now I want you to I want you to get that. Repeat after me. Before there's a reversal on the outside, there must be regeneration on the inside. Amen. Amen. And, and what regeneration is, is what? To be born again. To be born again. Now turn to your neighbor and say, neighbor. Neighbor. Can pastor, can pastor. Just, just teach, teach. For, a for a few minutes? Amen. 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 Because see, see, brothers and sisters, we need some what? Teaching. As is often said, you can't have a whole lot of preaching if there is not any teaching. So, so, so what I want you to do is turn with me to Titus chapter 3. Titus chapter 3. Beginning at verse 8. Titus chapter 3. Beginning at verse 8. When you get there, say amen. amen. Titus chapter 3. Beginning at verse 8. And I have to walk through this to, to, to show you, to, to say before there is a what? A reversal on the outside. See, this is a new year. We want change on the outside. We want prosperity. We want better relationship. We want peace. We want fulfillment. Well, we want to get healed. We want our careers to go. And, 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 and at the same time, we want to be big time church for Christians and, and, and so forth. But you want to what? A change you know, on the outside. But see, you, you got to stop and this is a good time to stop and see and that then the regeneration that occurred on this side. Are you are you really born again? So uh, uh so let's I'm gonna begin at verse uh four and, and repeat after me. But when the kindness and love of God our Savior appear. Amen. Amen. Mercy, the kindness of God appears. Through Jesus Christ. Uh, uh, mercy and kindness. Now, uh, repeat after me again. He saved us, he saved us. Not, because not because of righteous things, of righteous things. we had done, done, but because, because of his mercy. Of his mercy. Amen. Church, you never say, neighbor. The Bible says, you ain't all that. Just got to talk about the mercy that flows up. Well, from the washing. Now, this is what? 
spiritual on the inside, the washing of rebirth. That's what uh, rebirth. You got to be born again or what? On the inside and by renewal of the Holy Spirit. So somewhere out in the mystery of the spiritual reign, uh, when we make our commitment to Jesus Christ, uh, the Holy Spirit uh, takes us from that human nature world and what brings us into what? Uh, washes us and what? We're re reborn and we're renewed what? By the Holy Spirit. Repeat after me. Whom he poured out on us generously through Jesus Christ our Savior. So that having been justified by his grace we might become heirs having the hope of eternal life. Amen. Amen. You can't have a whole lot of preaching when there is no teaching. You got to be, you must be born again. And he said, well, he poured out the Holy Spirit. Now, he said, he just poured out the Holy Spirit on Baptists. He didn't make any more like Episcopalians or Pentecostal or a bishop so and so. But he poured out the Holy Spirit on all who be be believe that all who reborn, he re reborn, and then he said, what? Through, through what? Not through the preacher. Not through the church building, but what? Through Jesus Christ. Jesus Christ. And I just got through saying that Jesus Christ is a turnaround, what? A turnaround, say, Savior. But you got to be what? Hooked up with Jesus Christ. So he's saying that I'll say so that I haven't been justified. I, I, I mean, you, you know what I'm talking about. You're talking about justified, right? Justified. Yeah. Now, I had one son. I, you can have a camera and catch him doing something. You can have him on video. Yeah, I didn't do it. <laughs> and then after you say, yeah, look at the picture, then he's going to justify. Justify. It's not really. But, well, we can't. You can't justify anything to God. Because what? He knows what those there has on you, your head. Uh, he knows where you're going, where, where, where you've been. But through his grace, we can stand right with God. We are justified by his grace and his mercy. And we've been washed and we, we, we've been reborn uh, so that we might have the eternal life. So, uh, again, though, again, there cannot be any what? Reversal on the outside until there's what? Until there is regeneration on the uh, inside. And I'm, I'm here to tell you that the, the new birth the, it is not complete. It is complete. I'm telling you, when you are uh, born again, uh, uh, you're not, it's not being uh, re-educated. It's not being reformed. Uh, it's not being rehabilitated. It is being what? Reborn again. Reborn new. A new creation uh, in Jesus Christ. And when you have a new creation in Jesus Christ, you become wrapped up in Jesus. Uh, when you're wrapped up in, in Jesus, uh, you can be you can be wired up and to, to the higher power. Well, when you're wrapped up in Jesus, uh, you become wired up to the higher power. You get connected with the higher power. I'm not talking about any philosophy. I'm not talking about new age stuff. Jesus is the higher power. Because my Bible said he sits at the right hand of God. And our Sunday school lessons, you're, you're going to learn this month that he is our intercessor. He's there for you. He knows all about your struggle. In this life, uh, he's been through what you've been through. That's why the songwriter said Jesus knows all about our struggles. He will guide until the day is done. There's not a friend like uh, the Lord of Jesus. So, so you, uh, I, I want to ask you as 2015 come on, uh, uh, are you wrapped up and wired up? So if you're looking for a reversal, if you're looking for a new direction, uh, have you been born again? Have you been born again? Have, have you been born again? Uh, are you in connection with the higher power? Talking about Jesus. Not talking about philosophy. Not talking about the way not talking about Eastern philosophy. Not talking about meditation. Do you know Jesus? Do you know Jesus? Do you know Jesus? 
When, you know, Pastor Freddie Haynes of, of, of Texas uh, tells a story from his youth uh, about a, a basketball player who was an A number one basketball player. He could, he could swish them, he could hit them, he, 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 he was all district, all state on this Thursday. But, but there was one game, he was shooting bricks the whole game. Nothing would go in. And they were getting work pretty good. So at halftime, he, he knew it was over for him. It was so bad. But the coach pulled him aside. The coach pulled him aside and said, I was watching you. Uh, uh, you need to make an, an adjustment in the shot. You need to make an adjustment in the shot. And you need to do this and, and, and that. And uh, you know, I want you to go back in for the third quarter. He was he said, well, he went back in for the third quarter. And he did well. In fact. In fact, he hit the winning shot of the game. It's all because what? The coach led him to what? To make an uh, adjustment. And the coach gave him the power what? To turn what? His game uh, uh, around. And my brothers and sisters, that's what I'm here to tell you. You, you, you have the power. You have the power. The Lord will give you to the power to turn things around. But but you know, if you want to reverse it, <laughs> you gotta got to be born again now. now. Now you got to be born again. I'm not I'm not talking about looking like a child. I'm I don't care whether you're a preacher or a Sunday school teacher, or deacon, not, not talking about looking the part. Have you really uh, have you really have you really been born uh, again? Have you really given and do you really know, do you really know uh, Jesus? Or if you can, you can assess your power. How can you assess your power? Are you ready for that reversal? How can you assess that, assess that power in your life? You know how to get your connections on, on your uh, smartphones and your tablets and computers. You, you know what happens when you, do, when you lose your connection? You lose your connection. Uh, you, uh, 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 some, uh, I don't know how some people will make it if they didn't have a computer. I don't know how some people will. will, will I don't know how they would make it if they, they couldn't turn their computer on and what? Get that connection. Well, how can you access the other? Well, the first thing you need to do admit what, what was gone, admit what has gone wrong. You can't do it. Until you admit what has gone wrong, you can't what? Get the new stuff right. Until you admit what has gone wrong in the past. We know that famous uh, uh, parable from uh, Luke chapter 15, the prodigal son. Again, we're talking about this young man. This young, you know, there's a period in your life. You're blessed when God brings you up, you know, when you have, but once your parents let you go, and you think you know everything sometimes, how, how many of you messed up some stuff? After mama, daddy, grandmother took their hands off you. Oh, okay, you grown. Go ahead and do what you want to. Go ahead and do it. You find out that people want that car no money. They ain't playing about that car no money. They're not playing about that. Insurance company not playing about that premium payment. They, 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 they turn that thing off and the people come out and put your license tag off the car. And, and lock you up and they catch you driving with all that stuff. The repo, repo man come right out there to your job and hook it up. Pull it on, pull it on up. You know, you, 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 you find out about that type, type, type of stuff. So you have to admit what? The product of the son, he thought he had it all going on. What? What? And let's just break it down and keep it real. What did he spend his own money on? Hoochie mama? Drugs? Wine? Whiskey? And the part of life, that's what he's spending his money on. He, will, he said, I'm three times seven, and I'm going to do what I want to do. But he had to admit to what was wrong. He had to come what? The text said, well, he came to himself. But you had to admit to what? What, uh, what he did, what had gone wrong. You can't get right until you admit what has gone wrong. And until you admit that what's going wrong. And so, what this is, you've got to take 100% responsibility for your life. You can't put it on anybody else. you got to take 100% responsibility for your life. You can't always, we can't always blame it on what other folks. Can't be 100 now that's hard to do. Because in, 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 in life, what, 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 what I, I know uh, uh, well, one of the things we learn at, at, at law and in car accidents, and sometimes it wasn't accidents, but we got what we call comparative fault. 
you know, sometimes both, both folk get fault. It's just who got the fault the most. About percentage wise. But in your life, you got to take 100 responsibility, 100% responsibility uh, for that. And when you take 100 responsibility, you got to what? You got to own your own reality. You got to, you can't let other folks control your reality. And you cannot live in a dream world. You cannot, you got to own your right. You got to know what the real deal is. If you're going to admit what is going on, you got to be what? Honest to what? To thy own self what? Be true. You got to own your own reality. You have to take possession of your situation and your circumstance. You can't daydream your life away. I, I never forget uh, my last year talking to America because I love him. For some reason, I was in a Mark Proctor class in fifth grade. And however you had the room, my way, the way I, what, what, where I was sitting, I could see out the window. And boy, I could just daydream. And I could, just something just stick with me. And I could see, I could still see the window. And I could see who was sitting in front of the window. Because Shanika, your daddy was sitting right in front of the window. <laughs> and I looked past your daddy right outside the, outside the window. And there's daydream, daydream. But you can't live like that way. You can't get an age education daydreaming. You cannot move up in a career daydreaming. You cannot live. You know, everybody's not going to be a basketball player. Everybody's not going to be a rap singer. Everybody's not going to be a model. And if you have those skills, fine. But at a certain point, you have to own your reality. At a certain point, you have to own your reality. Admit what is going on. Then, if you want to access your power, admit uh, uh, admit what has gone wrong. Second, choose to change. You must choose to change. You must choose to change. Quick return to, to uh, you, 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 you got that power. Now, you, mean, you, you got the power. But sometimes we think that the Holy Spirit is just going to change stuff for us. We don't have anything to, to do, to, to, to do with it. Yeah. But the Holy Spirit has put us in this new power source. But you wait, you have to have to choose to change. You have to choose to change. But, you know, sometimes the Lord knocked you down so you can get up. The Lord knocked uh, Paul down on the Damascus Road. And after he got up, he went and spent five years in Arabia studying. But, but he had to make a choice. He wasn't going back. The way he, 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 he was. You see, when, 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 you, when you leave the crack house, when you leave the bartender, when you leave that old old life, you got to make a choice not to go back. You got to you got to break the what's the song we say? Break every chain. You got to break the chains of the values of, and the culture that would get you were saturated in. And this is how you do it. Turn to Romans twelve. Romans twelve. Romans twelve. Romans 12 and 2. Romans 12 and 2. Can't have a whole lot of preaching when there's no teaching. Amen. Verse 2. Repeat after me. Do not conform any longer to the patterns of this world, but be transformed by the renewing of your mind. That's a whole sermon myself. Now, now, do not conform any longer by the patterns of this world. Now, do, do you know what one of the definitions of culture is? The patterns and values of a, a, of a group. The patterns and values of a group. So you cannot, what, uh, uh, live in the patterns of it, especially in the church. You got to renew your mind. The church, the, the church house, the worship house, shouldn't look like a ballroom. It shouldn't be like a street corner. In the church house, we have to have what? A new attitude. We have to have a new attitude. And if we cannot come in the church for 90 minutes and sit down and don't talk and walk. I tell you something about the values. I tell you something about the values. The patterns of this world. The patterns of, of this world. See, that's what you're doing. Come, hey, man. Hey, man, Mark, what's happening, man? Right 
Pittsburgh Steelers shirt on today. I'm gonna talk to him about that in a second. Man, I'm gonna talk to him about that in a second. Man, I'm gonna talk to him about that in a second. Man, I'm gonna talk to him about that in a second. Man, I'm gonna talk to him about that in a second. Man, I'm gonna talk to him about that in a second. Man, I'm gonna talk to him about that in a second. Man, I'm gonna talk to him about that in a second. Man, I'm gonna talk to him about that in a second. Man, I'm gonna talk to him about that in a second. Man, I'm gonna talk to him about that in a second. Man, I'm gonna talk to him about that in a second. The renewing of, 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 of the mind. The renewing of, of, of the mind. Do not conform. And before that, he said, well, make your bodies what a sacrifice to, to, to the Lord. The renewing. Then you will be able to test and approve what is God's will. Then you will know what God's will. Once you renew your mind. Once you renew your mind. And, and we love the old folks. We sit up here and say that. But they get it from us. Young folks get it from us. I'm talking about you. I'm children. They learn from us. So, so if, if, if we want to turn things around, if we want to do things differently, we got to have a renewing of our mind. We got to change our mind about giving. We got to change our mind about how we talk to one another. We got to have a renewing of our mind how we treat one another. Now, that's what we have to have, a renewing of the, of the mind. I tell you what, I, 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 I love Kyle Perry. I, I like watching the deer, but the deer, the deer couldn't stay up my house that long at all. I ain't putting up with that food. It's cute. It's funny. I like it when they me, but don't you don't talk to me no kind of way. You know. And so, but that, and, but, but that's what part of our culture. Uh, uh, our comedians make millions of dollars playing the dozen, but we knew what happened about that. Yeah, everybody played the dozen until they say a little something wrong right now. Then the fight gonna happen. So the dozen's ignorant. The renewing of the mind. The renewing of the, of the, of the, of the, of the mind. So, and, and the, the, the last thing you, 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 you need to, to do, if you want to turn things around, you, you admit what has gone wrong so you can get it right. But, but what, you, what you need to do uh, uh, is remember God is a, another chance God. God is another chance God. Uh, that's what you have to hold on to, that God is a second chance God. And brothers and sisters, Paul, Paul uh, uh, knew this, and, and Jesus knew that. So the prodigal son, once he uh, decided uh, that uh, it was his fault that things went wrong, uh, he admitted what was wrong, uh, he renewed his mind, he said, at my father's house, I'm sitting here eating slop, but at my father's house, at my father's house, uh, he had all that I, I, I want. He returned home. He turned around. He renewed it. He admitted it was wrong. He returned it around. And, well, and the good thing about the father, he doesn't hold, our father, he doesn't hold again. He said, my son, my son who once was lost, uh, uh, he's at home now. Amazing grace, uh, how sweet the sound that saved uh, a, a wretch like me. That's that mercy. That's that, that grace. Uh, that is as complete. It's enduring and it is eternal. Uh, my brother, God is a second chance God. Many of us are here today because God has given us a second chance. Uh, he's been with us. He's walked with us. Uh, he's brought us through this and he's brought us through that. Uh, I'm so glad that God is a second class, the second chance God. Uh, somebody here, you can't get right uh, because you had a bad break. Uh, you had some bad decisions. Uh, you had some bad relationships. Uh, you had some bad uh, career things that happened to you. Uh, you had some bad relationships. Your heart has been broken. Uh, you, you can't get right. Uh, you can't turn things around. Uh, they seem like the economy uh, is bad for you. Uh, you can't sleep at night, huh? you have bad dreams about what used to be and what could have been, huh? you can't get right, huh? it doesn't appear that you can turn things around, so what I want to tell you as we close, if you can't get right, huh? I know you remember that culture classic of a comedy movie uh, called Life. It's one of my favorite movies. Uh, life, life. When they all locked up in jail. I mean, you had some of the what noted African American comedians. Uh, with Eddie Murphy, Martin Lawrence, uh, 
Oh uh, yeah, they, they, they were, were there, burning matches. You just had them all up there together. But, but right there in the middle of that film, uh, when they were locked down in jail, uh, they had a fellow in jail. They called, what did they call it? Can't get right. Uh, they can't, they what was his name? His name was Can't Get Right. Uh, can't, can't Get Right had what? A speech impediment. Uh, uh, he could not, uh, what? Speak correctly, you couldn't get right. You know, whatever you have impediments uh, in your life, uh, it causes you to uh, veer off the path. Uh, I can't get right. Uh, he had challenges. Uh, when you have challenges uh, in your life, uh, it's hard to turn things around. Uh, I see Deacon uh, Eric White over there. Uh, he works uh, at the Angola. Uh, he can tell you about some can't get right there. Uh, Good folks, uh, they just had a little impediment in their life. Uh, they had some challenges uh, in his life, but, but can't get right, uh, couldn't get right. Uh, but let me tell you one thing, uh, can't get right, uh, had a gift. Uh, he could play uh, baseball. Uh, he was an athlete, uh, and his gift uh, got him out of prison. Uh, what I'm here to tell you, uh, you think you can't get right, uh, you think you can't turn things around, but I'm here to tell you, uh, God uh, has given you a gift. Uh, if you tied up uh, in the Lord, uh, if you're wrapped up uh, in the Lord, uh, you keep reading Romans uh, chapter 12, uh, you keep reading Corinthians chapter 12, uh, you keep reading uh, Ephesians, uh, and you'll find out uh, that God uh, has given you a gift. Uh, if you Every day is an opportunity. Every day is a day to walk. 
on the rock. On the outside. This is a regeneration. See, we're good at looking like Christians. We know how to raise our hands. We know how to say, oh, I'm blessed. How to say, we know how to say, we know how to put on black suits and white stuff. We know how to do that. I really been born again. Paul was out until God let him die. One thing when you're really born again and you got to through the spirit, you know people on that. But you know some of the meanest folk you meet a church folk. Begins in the home. Begins in the home. Begins in the 